So this is kind of a bonus stop for uh, stop four. So this is more of the same formation, the Martinsburg formation, but I'm in a new location. I've actually jumped over on the other side of Massanutten Mountain, and I'm on the South Page Valley Road in the Page Valley, the valley that's between the Blue Ridge and Massanutten. And that's the opposite of the, uh, the Shenandoah Valley over on uh, the road south of Strasburg. We've got more outcrops of the same rock here. You can see that they're almost vertical in their orientation. And there's some cool characteristics here that help reinforce the story, help uh, sort of match up these outcrops with the stuff that we saw on the other side of the mountain. But the key thing to recognize here is that these are the same formation they've gone down and under Massanutten Mountain and come up again on the east side. Let's take a look. So a surface like this can give us a better indication of the history that this uh, rock body has been through. We've got information here about both the primary means of formation for this rock and also uh, information about something that happened to it after it formed. So go ahead and take a look at the outcrop here and see if you can tease out one or maybe both parts of that story. I'll give you a minute. Okay, well, I hope one thing that you noticed is that there's a change in texture as we go across the outcrop from me to, to over to this side. So it's coarse grained over here. It gets finer grained to about right here. Then suddenly it transitions to coarse grained again and gets finer going over to here. Then suddenly transitions to coarse again. So what you're looking at here are a series of graded beds. And these are the signatures of deposits by turbidity currents. These are turbidites, gray wacky and what used to be shale, um, mud rock in between the gray wacky. The other thing that's really obvious here is this fabric that runs through the rock kind of like this. And that fabric is a tectonic cleavage. It is a pressure solution cleavage that was caused when these rocks got squeezed during an episode of mountain building. Specifically, these rocks were squeezed during the late Paleozoic Allegheny and Orogeny. And during that time, the minerals that were soluble under pressure went into solution, particularly quartz in this rock, and they gave it this pronounced cleavage. Notice that the cleavage is really well developed, really fine in these muddier layers, which are more clay rich, and less well developed and more widely spaced in the coarser, sandier parts of the outcrop. A couple nice graded beds here. Um, we've got fine grain material here, sudden transition to coarse here, then gradually transitioning back to fine, sudden transition here along a wavy surface, an erosional surface, to coarse again. So we've got sand, that sand gets finer and finer going in this direction, silty, and then eventually uh, clay when you get over here to this side. Notice that the cleavage is more pronounced over here in the muddier portion of the bed and less pronounced in the sandier portion of the bed. And the same thing is true here. More cleavage in the muddier portion, less in the sandier portion. So these are rocks that have essentially paid witness to two episodes of mountain building, right? So we've got one episode of mountain building that deposits these rocks in the first place, the late Ordovician Taconian orogeny, and then another episode of mountain building, the late Paleozoic Allegheny orogeny that deforms them. Here's another example of graded beds, coarse to fine, sudden transition to coarse again, getting finer over in this direction. And then it looks like there's some planar laminations right along this surface, and then another turbidity current going over in this direction. Here's another example of uh, the power of these graded beds. Because we know that they have this certain orientation, that they're coarse at the bottom and they're fine at the top, it allows us to figure out which way is up. And with this set of beds, you might think that up would be to the right because they're dipping steeply to the right. However, the graded bed tells us that they're actually slightly overturned and that the right side is the bottom because that's where the coarse grains are, and then it gets finer going over to the left. So these beds have actually been tilted from horizontal up past vertical and then a little bit more over to the west. Right here you can see some cross bedding too. All right, that cross bedding is uh, cross bedding that um, you can see how it, it curves to become parallel with the main bed at the bottom. 
And so that's actually evidence of the current flow direction. In other words, the current was flowing this way when these uh, beds were laid down. And if you reconstruct them to their original orientation, in other words, unfold them so that they were uh, horizontal again, that means that the turbidity current came from the east. So that's where the Taconian mountain range was rising. It was shedding off sediment. It was carrying it downhill into the west, depositing it here. And then, much, much, much later, along came another episode of mountain building that tilted it and cleaved it and rotated it into this position. Speaking of current flow direction, this bed right here shows us some similar current flow information in the form of a primary sedimentary structure, and it corroborates what the other one told us just back there. So realize that our perspective has changed. You, your perspective has rotated by about 90 degrees relative to what we were just looking at. But um, here you can see beautiful examples of flute casts. Flute casts are structures that form when a flute is filled in by an overlying bed. So the bed that used to be right here and now has been removed was deposited and then it got eroded by a current that made this little hole in the bed a little tongue-shaped groove. And then later this sand got dumped on top of that bed and filled it in and filled in that little hole with sediment that preserved the shape of that hole. So you can see it's, it was deepest at this end and then it flared out and got shallower towards this end. So the current that produced this flute cast was flowing in this direction, all right? And again, if we unfold the beds back to their original orientation, that means that the current was coming from the east, all right? Coming from the Taconian orogeny, coming from the, the new mountains that were being shoved up into the air and being eroded off to the east. And here in the neighboring sedimentary basin, we were receiving sediment, dirty sand, clay, silt that was being shed off of that mountain belt. So this is a pretty cool outcrop that shows us another way of determining that these beds have been overturned. You'll notice here that bedding is very steep, but it's dipping in that direction, and that's towards the southeast. The cleavage is somewhat shallower here. It's dipping at this direction. Uh, same direction, I should say, but at a shallower angle. And where you have bedding and cleavage both dipping in the same direction, but the beds are steep and the cleavage is shallow, that tells you that the beds have been overturned. All right, so that has to do with how this cleavage initially forms its orientation relative to the beds and then how that bedding cleavage angle gets rotated through time, in this case where the beds go past vertical and get tipped over it. So the take home message here is when bedding and cleavage both dip in the same direction but beds are steep and cleavage is shallow, that tells us that the beds have been tectonically overturned. Okay, see if you can tease out which way is up as a, uh, a little self-quiz here. All right, well, hopefully you indicated that this is the bottom of the bed with the coarsest sand, and it gets finer going in this direction. So that way is up, and in this case, that's to the west-northwest. Plus, you can see that the bedding and cleavage both dip to the right, but the bedding is steep and the cleavage is shallow. That tells us up is to the left. Here we've got evidence of an overturned anticline. So we've come to uh, the edge of the overturned limb here, and you can see the axis right here at the center of the outcrop. The beds uh, go to horizontal over to the right. You can see the cleavage fans out across that hinge zone. So one thing I often like to do when I visit an outcrop like this is look at the stuff that's fallen down from the outcrop face. So there's all this debris here. Some of this debris is kind of nice, like here's a nice couple of graded beds, uh, evidence of turbidity currents. Might bring that one home for the students in the lab. But sometimes you make really cool discoveries like this one here. Yeah, look at that. So these little black lines that you see running down through this particular bed, hey, get out of there, ant. Those are fossils. Those uh, are little tiny fossil graptolites. And they are planktonic organisms that floated around in the water column 
and are found in deep water facies and shallow water facies, and they're a really good index fossil for many different strata. So these ones are these nice, long, straight examples, but there are uh, a variety of different shapes that you can find in these beds. And that about wraps it up for this outcrop. So uh, one other exposure of a familiar formation we've already seen helps add to the story, and more importantly, corroborate the testimony of the outcrops that we saw over across the way.